I'm Christy Johns from Australian Online News. Thank you so much for having us as part of your Talking Peace project. And it's been so nice to see all the international faces at a time when we can't even travel freely through our own country because of COVID-19. Shalom from Jerusalem, first of all. And second, I think that the, one of the benefits of the COVID uh, crisis is that we have learned to live with, uh, this, uh, with technology instead of with traveling. And I don't think that this kind of a project that we're trying today, we're starting today, will be possible, would have been possible if we wouldn't have changed the culture of interviewing uh, long distance. So let's true, look at I the silver lining in, the, in that. There's always one, isn't there? So one year since the Abraham Accords were signed, how significant is this agreement and what has been achieved so far? Why was it needed as well? First of all, it's a very important agreement. The, the peace agreement, peace and normalization agreements that we signed with the UAE, with Bahrain, and with Morocco are a, definitely a change of the reality in the Middle East. It created opportunities for other countries, but, definitely, but most important, it created the opportunities for the citizens of those countries to really feel the benefits or peace. It's not just a peace agreement that's signed by leaders or by politicians. It's a peace agreement that will definitely touch the lives of each and every citizen and will, be, will make our lives uh, better. The achievements are numerous. I think that the most uh, significant numbers I can mention are the, the, we've signed over 40 uh, bilateral agreements uh, at, uh, during the last year. A, on economy, on trade, on tourism, on science, on technology. A, those a, agreements are the infrastructure of future a, a relations between our, the, two, the peoples. And a, I'm, when my kids were younger, and they asked me, what do I do for a living? And it was quite hard to explain what does a diplomat do, especially for young kids. I a, usually told them that I work in construction. I build bridges. And I, this is exactly what we're doing today. We're building bridges. Those, each and every agreement is a bridge that future generation will walk on. And actually, the current generation will walk on. And they, over the last year, one of the examples is that over 200,000 Israelis already visited the UAE. And in a year that was dominated by COVID crisis, just imagine what would happen when, we, when the COVID crisis would be over. I think we've started a new journey in the Middle East and a new reality, without a doubt. And how does an agreement like this affect a country like Australia? I think it will affect the, uh, the entire world. It will bring stability to a region that was known for its instability. It will bring prosperity. It will create circles of influence, uh, first in the, within the Middle East and then in the uh, a nearby region, but the, one of the issues that my, my, we might think in uh, talking about Australia is that it will be a lot easier for Israelis to visit Australia and for Australians to visit Israel since we, because of the agreements, we can fly a, a, with a shorter route towards Asia and from Asia to Australia. I think that it will benefit the uh, trade between Israel and Asia. It will uh, affect tourism between Israel and uh, Asia, and definitely Australia will be part of it. Yes, hopefully one day when we make peace with the pandemic. Um, now, what <laughs> countries would death. you like to see join the agreement next? Does Israel have countries in mind that, that it's targeting? First of all, from day one, the creation of the State of Israel, we are looking for peace with all our neighbors. And we would love to see other countries, Arab and Muslim countries in the Middle East and in the entire world, joining the circle of peace. There are a few countries that are actually on the way uh, to joining that, uh, the circle of peace. I don't want to mention uh, uh, each one in particular because I don't think it will benefit the process. But without a doubt, the, we are in a process that will uh, bring other countries to the table, other countries to this group of countries that chose a better future for their kids. And I'm um, being signed that we have time for one quick last question. 
Okay, I'll make it a good one. Um, how would you get Palestinian leadership into this circle of peace? Is, is that a goal right now? Without a doubt. There's no one in the world that wants a, a solution for the Palestinian-Israeli conflict more than Israel. And hopefully the Palestinians will understand that there's a choice to make, whether they want to be in, in which side of history they want to be. And they, whether they want to be in the group of countries that chose peace or they want to be in a group of, con of countries that chose a conflict, terrorism, and violence. Hopefully the Palestinian leadership will understand that the only way to achieve their goals is to, uh, through direct negotiation with Israel. We do invite the Palestinian to change their uh, decision not to negotiate peace with Israel and uh, definitely we would expect a future solution to the uh, uh, Palestinian-Israeli conflict and hopefully the Abraham Accords and the peace agreements in the region will affect that as well. Well, good luck for a peaceful year ahead. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.